Yo, what's going on guys? We're here in Texas, Denton, Texas for another episode of Cool Down. This is episode three with my longtime friend, Max First. Uh, we've worked together quite a bit in the past with uh, creating content. In this episode, we're gonna talk about business, filming, marketing, drifting, and just where and what Max is up to right now. Hope you guys enjoy. That's move. You don't have a bottle opener. Who taught you that move? I don't know, dude. Who knows? I don't know. I was over 21 though, I promise. You sure? Yeah. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> um, all right, Corey, you tell us when you're good to ride. We're good? Yeah. All's good? I'm gonna slip and fall on all my- uh... I know, your fucking nosebleed down here. <laughs> my power steering fluid. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's kick it off. So we are here with Max first. This is episode three of Cool Down. Um, and then I wanted to give the viewers just a little bit of an update. Uh, so if this is the first time you're listening to this, this is um, more of like a podcast directed show, I guess you should say. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously still visual to it if you're watching on YouTube, but primarily we're trying to create some just podcast esque content. So anyways, we're here with Max. This is episode three. Thanks for having me. Let's do this. Cool. Uh, so Max, we go back a long time. Yeah, I was just saying, I don't even know where to start. Dude, me neither. I was literally thinking about how to start it, and I was like, ah. Uh, but let's, uh, for the viewers, like, tell us about yourself. Like, I will give you the floor for a minute to just, like, ramble on. Okay. Like, Currently, I guess, uh, I'm a director slash videographer, cinematographer, which, whatever you want to label it. Um, and primarily, I like to shoot cars. It's what I do the most of, but um, I own an agency in Dallas. I've got um, a supplement company that I've taken my efforts and used to run the marketing side of it and um, used drifting or filming drifting as kind of a platform to like break into the business world, I guess. Right. And I'm sure we'll get back to how we started working together, even became friends. But Living together too. Yeah, we've lived together <laughs> and full circle now. Like I've known you for what, 11 years probably? Yeah, for sure. I think I was 18 when I met you. Yeah. Um, now full circle, we're get back to working on drifting stuff That's right. like we did back in the day. That's right. So let's go. Um like that isn't that gnarly that's insane um but let's go back to the beginning beginning like uh -huh. where okay so you come out of high school you went to college or no i forget i went to yeah i went to college at unt that's right we're in denton right now yep. which is even weirder to be back in the area full circle very true um so yeah and what'd you go to college for i went i switched majors three times <laughs> like went, drift cars huh i went to school yeah right <laughs> yeah it's just much more expensive when you bullshit around in college Very for too true. long. Very I went to true. school for five and a half years and then I dropped out. So You never finished. I never finished. Wow. Now that we're up here, maybe I'll go take the last 13 <laughs> hours I need to do. But, That's uh, it? 13 hours? Yeah. Yeah, like well, you asked me to go do FD. Very true. And I had a semester left and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do FD. Was that 13 or 14? Dude, honestly, I can't remember. Yeah. I think 13. Okay. I think. You had... Um, it was your Ryan Davis mm -hmm. design livery yeah. with all the pinks and blues and yeah. white lines. It was so I year. think that was 14. Is that 14? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We had the Hoonigan like That was green the, the year prior. Yes. Okay. That was 13. Yeah, yeah. The intro. Yep. Yeah. I could be a little bit wrong, but somewhere yeah, around there. But anyway, so you go to college, together. you get out of college. Well, you don't even finish college. Uh -huh. And then what's the first thing you did? I went and, sh I went and shot photos and slash crude on your team and i guess that that what you assigned me with was to just like help out with the car but i was there to shoot photos to build recaps to send out to sponsors wow. for you after events that's crazy if you remember that <laughs> just barely yeah that was that was my task i'll i'll never forget at road atlanta which i think was round two I was not a mechanic. I'm still not. My knowledge is better now. I can work on my own car now. Um, but I was just there to help your dad, um, Adam. Mm -hmm. And I remember at Road Atlanta, it started raining. Yeah. And I, it was like your top 32 battle or something. And Forsberg 
came up to us. He was like, yo, Nate, disconnect your rear sway bar. Correct. And so everyone was kind of busy. So I took it upon myself to try and like remove the whole sway bar. And I'm under the car, like wrenching on it. And Chris was like talking to your dad and he just looked under and I had disconnected one end and I had started on the other end. He was like, dude, if you like, it's fine. One's done. If you just do one side, yeah. it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I felt like the biggest idiot. I was like, he definitely knows I don't work on cars. <laughs> <laughs> He's wrenching on Nate's car. He's just like, who is that? He's a filmer, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm just a cameraman. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So that was year one. Year one. Yeah. Yep. Just helping yep. and then doing recaps with my yep. uh, $300 camera. Dang, man, that's insane. And then that took you to the next chapter, which was we hung out for a few years. Like you stayed a part of the program yeah. for a few years. I know we, uh, okay, so I can segment into we did a 144 VM with BC Racing. Yeah, I think that was my third year. Right. With and that was our last season to like, heavily worked together on mm -hmm. creating yeah. at that time. It's because right at that time, then you moved kind of on to like your entrepreneurish type mm -hmm. shit, right? Mm -hmm. I took a year, basically I was in school, I think for that first year I worked with you Then out of school, I was working, but still going around. I was waiting tables, so I was paying my bills doing that. Yep. And I could still go to rounds because I could get shifts covered. The third year we shot and then I kind of started growing like the corporate side of business right. you know which right. ended up being the agency i have now um but i'm trying to think we live that's what it was we lived together yeah. that last year we lived together we had the shop um and yeah we were doing yeah. video recaps yeah yeah we were just learning it. yep yeah we I, I remember that we just went for it mm -hmm. we we're just learning trying to talk to sponsors trying to connect with sponsors mm -hmm. And uh, those times were super fun and difficult. Yeah. You remember that shit? Oh, yeah. Like getting through some of that stuff is like, it's cool. You're chasing your dream, but you also realize, you know, the path of like, it's a difficult path. It's pressure. It is. And it's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Right, right. And you're traveling, like... you're at Road Atlanta, pulling a sway bar off one day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the next day you're back home busting tables and shit, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I remember that last year, like, working on 144 VM and, mm -hmm. you know, um, the concept was rad mm -hmm. and we were doing cool stuff. And um, I think that's when at least I learned, like when you have a program with sponsors that you have to appease, it's like you really learn what you need to create. Let's talk about that. Cause that's a really good point. Like what we've been learning on our path is just like, so you get a, like for everyone out there maybe watching or listening, it's like you get a sponsor and you promised them a video episode. Mm -hmm. And then we were learning about, you know, kind of styling and what needs to be included and what mm -hmm. you don't do, maybe drink a beer, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, how do you feel as a creator working kind of in that box? Is it difficult or is it like, I what, mean, like what do you do as a creator in that case? I remember that transition being difficult because like as we grew, you know, budgets and sponsorships grew, but as those get bigger, they're, it's not that the b demands are bigger, but they're more specific. Right. So like, I remember- Layers of detail equal more yeah, money. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, you're trying to appease them. You're trying to give them ROI mm -hmm. on what they're giving you, mm -hmm. you know? And we're just kids that grew up filming skateboarding and mm -hmm. that's how we film stuff before more and more money got involved and more and more direction gets involved. Yep. So I found myself like making something and being super amped on it. And it was like, oh, we got to change this stuff or, oh, you got to film it this style. Right. And like, I struggled with that. Well, and that's something, you know, through Rhythm, my print shop and just a few things that I've done in my past, I've been working with creative people and I've been learning how difficult it is for. See, I told you I almost slipped. Almost, dude, it's <laughs> gonna happen. <laughs> um, but like, um, Max almost slipped on his own. Yeah, for, for, for the audio listeners, yeah. if you hear a big thud, it's me falling on my power <laughs> steering fluid. No, but like uh, working with creators, it's hard to, you know, like for, I have a really good friend who's an illustrator mm -hmm. and, you know, someone wanted a person jumping over a car, let's say, and it was so difficult for him to not necessarily use his own style on it. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I was thinking a lot about with creating is like, it's a sponsor may want a certain style, which is what I learned on you just don't maybe accept that deal. 
if your team or brand has a style mm -hmm. that you know you're going to deliver and it doesn't fit in the box of the brand's mm -hmm. style, would you say it's better to not take the money and keep your style or take the money and alter your style? Um, I think it's depending what it is. Yeah. You know, at, at that time. Would you have not done that deal then if you had to make so many adjustments? Mm -hmm. See, see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Not, not to get into specific, specifics, specifics, uh, not to get into specifics, but you know, I, there were pieces of content and I, this has worked both ways. Like of course. there's pieces of content that we created that I felt like the community just grabbed onto and embraced so much and sponsors for the next piece of that content were like, we don't like it. It needs to be like this. Of course. And that's what I struggled with. Of course. But um, it works both, both ways, ways yeah. you know, like yeah. um, sometimes like sometimes a sponsored riot or, you know, of course, know. of course. Yeah, no, for sure. Just something to think about for everyone listening. Like that's a very unique position we were in at that time, which yeah. was fun to learn from. Like you get a sponsor, you get an obligation, you do fulfill it. But then there's more adjustments, more adjustments uh -huh. and uh, just lining up the creative with the brand's mm -hmm. branding is important to think about a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was getting o opposite wise. Like, you know, if you're, if your brand has a certain look, a certain style, you know, like you bring up the Hoonigans, like they're raw, mm -hmm. um, hand cam, like yeah. shaky cam, GoPro, just yep. not super cinematic. Like that's their style. Um, and they have to stick with that even down to like YouTube algorithms, mm -hmm. like, that's what people watch and that's what people go there to watch. Yeah. And when you break that, a lot of times it can not work. Right. If that makes sense. Well, let's break into, uh, so you're, okay, so you, you know, you come out of college, you're working with Nate, mm -hmm. uh, you're drifting, you're going, you're traveling a bit, you're creating. You're drifting. I'm drifting. Yeah. I'm Nate, actually. <laughs> but, you know, for, you know, yeah, whatever. But it's just like. Your, what was your first like solo gig? So like after you kind of left 144, mm -hmm. let's say, and like had your own lanes to create? Yeah. What, what did you do? Like what was your, one of your first things you remember that like really gave you confidence to like be where you're at today? Uh -huh. Actually the first, the first thing that gave me confidence into like, hey, I can make money doing this, yeah. like good money, yeah. was actually be before I had even gone to FD. I was in college, right? Um, but we were filming stuff still. Um, but it was um, it was an app designed by my friends Todd er Todd Ersley and Kevin Du Bois. Uh, Kevin runs Evo Dy Dynamics here in Dallas. They right. work on Evos, cool. um, and they designed an app that helps organize and run performance shops. That's right. So they hit me up. They were like, "Hey." That's right. 500 bucks, make a video for us. Right, and it's like clock in, clock out. It's all registered on the app, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep, yeah. Great app, like if you have a shop, check it out. Yep. It's great because I just I just went to uh, the 2K Super Nationals mm -hmm. with them earlier in February this year. So like, yeah. what is that, six years later, I'm still shooting videos for them, Sick. you know, for more than 500 bucks. Dude. It's great. <laughs> Thank you guys. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so, so I grew with them, yeah. but uh, yeah, that was the first video that I made that was kind of, that I remember being like a huge kind of corporate That's production. That's cool though. That's super um, cool. And just been like, wow, like, right. you know, 500 bucks was a lot of money to of me course, back then. Man. You yeah. know, I was broke in college. Yeah. And that's the thing too, like creating in media is, is a great place to be, mm -hmm. especially in 2020, 19. Yeah. Like it's a great, everyone's going to need to create media. Yeah. You know, well, you, marketing. You can tell me this, but back then, like I didn't, anticipate it right. being like this right i didn't think youtube was going to be the primary no. thing that people use to consume content no. like we were just making videos we were raised on cable tv yeah you know and that was the big shift i think 14 15 16 was like that fading mm -hmm. into now i mean me and my wife don't even have a tv mm -hmm. like we do not have cable mm -hmm. i do not you know what i mean like it's all consumed through the internet of YouTube or whatever, Netflix, yeah. you know, which that shift is, is good for, for us yeah. creators, you know? Yeah. It puts, puts, uh, opportunity yes. in our hands. Yeah. Um, that's super cool. Anything else you want to talk about? Like, um, how's the, you're invested in the pre-workout stuff. Yeah. That's cool. 
that was kind of a crazy random thing. Yeah. Like long story short, I found out that my, my current partner in that company uh, lived in the same apartment complex as my dad. Okay. And him and I had gone to high school together. We'd hung out and like we were friends, yeah. but we were never like super close. And we just reconnected one day because I ran into him and my dad knew him. Right. And I was just like, how do you guys know each other? Yeah. They're like, we talk every day, 6 a.m. We both are leaving, we chat and uh, I connected with him. He's on uh, the Olympic bobsled team, okay, which is cool. That's cool. Um, and he had a need for media, and that was kind of circling back to one of the first things I said, like using camera operating, editing, marketing to wiggle my way into business opportunities. And so in this case, just for everyone wondering, you're probably trading your workflow for an investment in his company. Mm -hmm. So you're helping grow the company, but you're also invested in it, yes. which over time will be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Like it'll return. So initially, you know, it's like, hey, I can create content for you. Yeah. Give me a piece of the company. See, and that's something to think about. Like you think a lot of people coming into the creative world expect a paycheck like off the top? Or do you think sure. a lot of like, Especially we, in drifting. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, like the illusion, right? Yeah. But in our case, it's like it's very true. You you kind of give your work away, give your work away, build uh -huh. your build your like credibility up in a sense mm -hmm. as you eat ramen noodles mm -hmm. to then you know actually get your foot in the door. You have to. I mean, I think that goes for a lot of the spectrum of life. For sure. Like, I don't think anyone's handing out millions of dollars, and I don't think mm -hmm. you just get i mean i guess you could just get a job these days doing media. yeah yeah it's 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 all about your end goal mm -hmm. right so um if you film and you want a paycheck every two weeks right. you can go to a media company and make 50 to 100 to more like for some companies like yeah. you can make great money yeah. you can get a check every two weeks you can have a house you can have a wife you can have a kids and that's great like, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to check in, check out, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but um, my goals that I have for myself are to, you know, be a company owner, a multi-company owner, and use my skills that I have. You know, I wasn't math savvy, right. like I'm semi-business savvy, but right. not, you know, my, my skill lies in my media, you yeah. know. Um, and your network. It, well, yeah, that's You're that's a whole good, different that, deal. A, I think that's like, one of your strengths is your network. You, you have a good network. That just, you know, boils down <laughs> to just not being a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. <laughs> you know? But like you said, keeping clients around for a long time. Yeah. Like, that's a good thing, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. clients to just knowing people, yeah. it's just providing value. Right. Ne networking is providing value to people and, like, I know you watch Gary Vee stuff. Mm -hmm. I've consumed Gary Vee content. Like he's one of the people that that will tell you that uh, like if you provide value on the front end without asking for anything in return, mm -hmm. like that's a great way to of course. set yourself up to win. Of course. Yep. So then let's let's go into uh, now you're shooting, you've worked with a few companies, uh, you've invested in a few things, and then that led you to getting a drift car. Yeah, it spills. I worked for ten years for everywhere. this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> he said, I "You don't have a motor in your car, said, and my car looks more broken years. than yours." <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool though. So this is your second drift car. You've had a two hundred and forty before. Yeah. So so circling back to when we met, and then we'll come come back to this. But when I met you, yep. I. I think that 240, I had an S13 with an SR that I bought from somebody already swapped. Because Sammy Tiger didn't build it. I know. I'm going to have to holler at Sammy because <laughs> I, I have an S14 now with a very mad SR. Oof. But that was my first car, um, drift car, that I had bought when I was 18. Um, and that's how I linked up with you. I showed up at a drift meet. That's right. I met you and George. Yep, under the bridge, yeah. George Bush, 75. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I Saturday nights from like 18 to like 20 were just consumed with running around with you yeah. and like 60 other people. It was insane. We really had something special going on right there. Yeah. Like we really did. So for those listening, we would basically in the Dallas area, we would meet at George Bush in 75. It's basically North Richardson, Plano-ish area. 
under George Bush, there was a parking, a uh, dark parking, a dark lot. parking lot, which was super <laughs> empty at Saturday at 10 p.m. Yeah. And we would all meet there and we would basically say what up, do the whole like, you know, look at your e it was a choice. car meet. Yeah, car you meet, know? bullshit. And then at 1030 at night, we would do a full cruise around Dallas. So down 75 through Dallas to 30 up to Big Town and we would drift. Yeah. every Saturday mm -hmm. and we literally did it until we had like Max said like 60 plus cars and then we realized that us drifters were putting on a show and at that same time obviously the cops realized we were putting on a show yeah and that was about when that ended because it was just yeah spots got kind of blown up but it worked for so long because all the all the kids would go out street racing Garland in Garland yes and so, we were hidden yeah, we were in industrial lots. I, I like to preach that we were quite a bit safer than like say dudes drag racing down the street. Of we'd, course. We'd go find a warehouse yeah. in a big lot. Yeah. We'd section people away from all the action. And our speeds are slower. Like yeah. realistically, yeah. like back in the day, you know, we're going second gear stuff around. We thought we were so sick. Oh, we were the shit. <laughs> him, him and George were like the dudes. <laughs> like I remember showing up my first 240 yeah. and like watching you guys run tandem yeah. and you know, Quick there's like three car gap Dude. and I'm like, oh my God. I know, I know. One time, I, I wish I would have had a GoPro back then, but we didn't even have those. Uh -huh. But I swear to God, I'll never forget this memory. Like I, I do a mirror to mirror tap with George's really? mirror. And, and I just like fell in love with drifting forever. <laughs> you know, like I thought I was gonna hit him, but then I just tapped his mirror and it was game on from there. But you guys are killing it. We do, you know, and that's a funny story that people probably don't know a lot about me is just George Lopez, he's a buddy of ours who really pioneered drifting in, you know, Rockwall, Garland, our area. Our area. And essentially he just, he was just a badass and he did whatever the fuck he wanted. He did not care. Uh -huh. But I remember that and, and he passed away, long story short, he ended up getting shot, but mm -hmm. it was like his goal and my goal were to become professional drifters. Yeah, and, and it was y'all. Yeah. When I met you guys that night, it was you guys. Yeah, yeah. And you when know? he passed away, it was like my prophecy to make that happen in my mm -hmm. life and then shit, you know? I know, like, if you followed him for a long time, you see the, the RIP JL stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, that's the JL stuff we always run on the car. It's mm -hmm. kind of just... He really, really, I mean, Joseph, obviously, Joseph Bell helped us yeah. a bunch. Like, him and Joey ran hand in hand with, mm -hmm. like, getting it done. But, mm -hmm. yeah, George, man, he was on it. Yeah, I met, I met you guys that night, tried to drift, failed miserably. And George walked up and asked me if he could drive my car. And I was just like, yeah, go for it. Well, the, the, back, the weird background on that is, like, so George dated my sister, right? Mm -hmm. This was when we all lived at mom's house. And... This motherfucker would be coming to my door, just dun, 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 dun. You know, he's like, yo, it's fucking, it's raining a little bit. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like 10, 30, 11 at night. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's raining. And we would just get up, we'd both get our 240s and we'd go to the industrial park. So like, I don't even remember how many times we tried to do a donut mm -hmm. before I met you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, we practiced a lot on either just a donut then we moved to figure eights mm -hmm. and it was probably a year of that. Yeah. So it's like then we went to Big Town and we could do, you know, the like semi like drip. Yeah. You, you slam second gear yeah, and, and you're real scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you're going 30 instead of 10 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Those are good days. Yes. So, yeah, you and George grinded for a long time, learning how to drift. Yes. Which people don't know, it takes a long time, mm -hmm. especially back then, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, then I met you guys, y'all were killing it. I knew yeah. I wanted to drift. We became friends, we skated. Yes. We eventually lived together, we made media projects. Yep. I was looking up to Corey, because he made all those old episodes of you. I, before I hop back into this, I wanna say, Corey Denemy set the standard yeah. for the event recap. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Every, no, or sorry, nobody was doing it no. until you released the episodes that he had filmed of you. Yeah. And, then, and you know, on my end, I knew nothing about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I knew Corey, crazy. Corey would come to the race. Corey's filming this. And right he now. would film, yeah, Corey's behind <laughs> the camera right now. But he would come to the race. Corey would just sit me down and be like, talk to, like whether we did it in a hotel room, Corey, remember that shit, or the lobby? 
Like we would just basically get an interview done, he would film the drifting, and he built a story around it, mm -hmm. which like I said, uh, I had no clue until a DVD showed up at my house, mm -hmm. and then me and my mom cried because we watched it and it was like a movie, <laughs> right? You know, it's just like one of those things you just, but long, the background on that was yeah. Corey was in Long Beach. He was filming for school. He was also in college. And, then and he had to film a documentary. Trend. Well, that was oh, before. Oh, sorry, sorry. From my knowledge, Motor Trend actually seen I thought you were moving that. forward. Yeah. So Motor Trend seen that video and then called him. Mm -hmm. So it was like Corey's work in college, college project, filming a documentary, still happens to know his friend Nate is drifting calls me can i come out yeah no problem have no clue what he's doing mm -hmm. goes home goes home like the whole year i didn't we didn't see no footage we weren't posting anything at that time like we are now and then boom then the whole a whole thing comes out and it really it launched my career i'm not lying mm -hmm. like you said it set the standard for the event recaps but it also gave context to a drifting athlete and what what it is mm -hmm. you know so yeah. yeah that was gnarly as fuck then he killed it at Motor Trend. And then Corey went on to Motor Trend, and then we took a gap in time where he left 144 and just had to work and um, did awesome shit, traveled mm -hmm. around. But anyways, let's get back to you. So, so, yeah, we lived together, you know, after becoming friends, skating, lived together. Um, I had my S13 back then. That was like my first drift car. I missed that car so much. Um, Never sell your first drift car. Yeah, I did that. Some kid just wrecked it a whole bunch. And um, come, you know, I sold my car because I was in school and I, I was broke. I was just like, I can't, you know, you had moved on to really bigger and better setups and drifting was just expensive for me. So I was like, yeah. I'll give a little bit on how I started filming. I sold my car, but I wanted to feel useful at the track. Um, I stole Fielding Shredder's T2i, I filmed his tube front being made. That was the first anything car video Damn. I shot. Um, and from there, it was filming him, filming you, and that's what it kind of grew into. Right, and then a few years later, you got this car. I have this thing. Awesome. This poor, poor thing. Tell us what so, it is. Tell us what, um, about it. For the people that can't see this, you're lucky. Um, it's a very beat up um, 1998 328 IS um, BMW E36. Um, I bought this car for two grand. I probably have a, about 3,500 bucks into it. It's got uh, Amazon knuckles, like knuckle adapters on it, E46 arms, some BC coilovers, and a 3.9 diff, and like a seat and bolt-in cage. And I've just been yeah. beating on Getting it. Getting in car wrecks. Yeah, <laughs> hitting stuff, hitting other cars, and it won't die. Right. Which is amazing, because I don't like working on cars. And this car has been like the perfect example of, I hate to use the term missile, right. but it's been like dubbed that Thrash, via other thrasher, people. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like a thrash car. Yeah. Like I just go out and drive, I park it on the trailer. Yeah. Two days before an event, if I'm lucky, I go start it up and hope it runs. Uh, I put fluids in it and I go out and I drive with my friends and- uh, But that's a level- Do it again. Well, that's a level of drifting to talk about too. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, Yes, you know, like let's say me, I'm doing all this crazy shit every year. Mm -hmm. But for you, you're just able to get to a level where you have a drift car, it uh -huh. runs low maintenance, and you get low way more laps than me. Yeah. You're at the track just like running laps. Oh, I've gotten 100 laps on a set of kendos before. That's awesome. Multiple times. That's, we'll have Actually. to blur out that word, the K word. Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> on tires. Actually, I take that back. So not only Kendas, right now I have uh, some Lion Hearts that accidentally got listed at $20 a tire. Okay. They're 265s. Big tire for a stock yep. E36. How much pressure are you put in them for that show? Oh, dude, I had them at like 80 or 90 <laughs> when I first <laughs> ran them. them <laughs> yeah, the car was just so tight and yeah. so gripped course, up that it was, it was hard to drive until I had heat cycled the tires. But yeah. these tires have over 100 laps on them and right. three days of driving. Right. And they're on the same tire. Yeah. You know? But that's a good thing for people to know. Like, definitely take your time with drifting. If you're listening to this because you want to drift. Yeah. I mean, there's a fair amount of DMs that are just like, how do I drift? How do I get yeah. going? Follow Max's lead. Like, buy something affordable. Mm -hmm. Take your time with it. Like, one of the things I tell the youngest kids coming up is just like, the first car, you're going to wreck it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to know that. Like, yeah. you're going to get in a wreck. It's important to know that. Yep. So. 
you have to be attached to your first car, you know, but not too attached to yeah. actually get to the next level. But yeah, I think definitely running a missile slash car or missile car is like fucking cool. Yeah, it's you know, it, it's cool when it turns into a missile. Yeah. Not if you if you buy a piece of crap and yeah. it just stays a piece of crap. Right. Like it ain't a missile car. Like Very true. you go out, you drive your car hard, you learn, you get in accidents, you bump each other, yep. and you know, at the end, my whole thing is the end of the year, you try and re revamp a little bit, right? right? But this thing was supposed to be a low maintenance, low cost, uh, I got high question. seat time drift car. I got a question for you. Yeah. So with you being a background in marketing and mm -hmm. creating and all of these things, mm -hmm. and then now you have a drift car, mm -hmm. have you ever leveraged drifting to gain a sponsor? Yeah. So I have uh, two sponsors on my car. Awesome. Two sponsors. Hell yeah. Actually, yeah, I have two sponsors. <laughs> he said, let me think about yeah, it yeah. quick. So, um, we'll BC, shout them out. BC Racing. Okay, that's a great um, one. Yeah. And you know, that was just, everyone thinks you got to send emails and send decks and ask for money and hype yourself up. Like my relationship with BC started with you. Yeah. You know, I, uh, shout out Cody. Yeah. I'd known Cody Slack at BC. Don't email him. Don't call him. Don't Instagram him. Or do everyone blow him up. Tell him Max and Mason. <laughs> <laughs> it was him, not me, Cody. <laughs> but I, I had known Cody, who was was uh, I guess he's the director of marketing at BC, yep. or at least handled your sponsorships mm -hmm. there. And Cody crushes it at BC. Does a ton over there. Um, but I had a relationship with him because he was funding your racing and I was yeah. making content and we became good friends and yep. I got to hit him up and, right. and be like, hey, I'm doing this. Right. Like, can you help me out? Is there anything I can do? So you that know? was one of those like good people sticking with good people. Yeah. Over time, you kept Over your time. composure. But now let's talk about your other sponsor. So is this one the same category or? Somewhat. Okay. So XXR Wheels is my other sponsor. Cool. Um, that was essentially gifted to me awesome. um, in a way. So Fielding Shredder, which you guys may have seen on Hyperdrive, you've driven with Fielding a ton. Yeah, like my whole life. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, in, in Lone Star Drift back, you know, mm -hmm. our, our Texas Pro-Am series, yep. um, I filmed with Fielding a long time too. So being that I've created content with him as well, uh, when I got a drift car, he was just like, hey, I see you're making content. I see you're doing a couple videos here and there. I'm gonna connect you with XXR. I want you to make a deck, right. a driver's deck or a proposal for those that don't know the, that lingo. Yep. Um, and I made that and sent it to XXR and they were like, hey, we're gonna send you wheels for the season. So that's another cool point. Like in some cases, uh, big train behind us here at the yeah, shop sorry, for those guys. listening, but uh, that's, a, that's a good point. Like in some cases there is a let's say a more corporate avenue you travel down where you need a deck you need to write out in a pdf file what you're doing like what your goals are yeah. what you just did your history your like deliverables a, you what know, you're going to do this exactly. year what they get out of giving you money or product and one thing i learned i want to just drop this out because i really learned this was something that's super important when you're searching for a sponsor is to know what you need Meaning like if I go to Max and I'm just like, yo, Max, will you sponsor me? And then he's, you know, I've had people where I'm just like, yo, could you help our race program? And then they're like, okay, how? And I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, some money. They're like, okay. And then I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. So if you know, like I need a thousand dollars, it's a lot easier to go find the thousand mm -hmm. because you're able to say for a thousand dollars, I'm going to do this. So it's like that reverse engineering approach where I've talked a lot this year to grassroots drivers mm -hmm. um, on the Endless Search for Tires tour. And it's like kids don't even know what they need, but then they need a sponsor. They're kind of they're So they're reaching out. Don't and, hail Mary. Yeah, exactly. So just try to imagine a budget and stick to it and then go get that budget. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like video, right? You break down every bit of equipment, people, time that you need. Exactly. And then, I mean, you're not searching for a sponsor. You already have a company on the hook or maybe it's a proposal. Right. And you're like, this is what it's going to cost to make this for you. Right. You know? Yeah, that's super, super interesting. Yeah. But yeah, that's good information for people to know. You know, it's like 
the game is reverse engineering and knowing what you need mm -hmm. and then scaling over time to get there. Yeah. I don't think any uh, athlete I look up to just overnight got there. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody and I know. Ne it's never as cut and dry as you think it no, is. No, no. And deals can fall out. Like we, we use the word leverage, which was like mm -hmm. the least amount of sponsors you have to have. And the more that your or our companies can grow is the goal mm -hmm. because sponsors come with obligations that then you lose a lot of your leverage or mm -hmm. in some cases like we talked about at the beginning your brand identity because you have to create a commercial that looks like their commercial they want mm -hmm. and you're really kind of chasing your tail yeah isn't that interesting yeah but in a sure. sport like motorsports and I'm, i know i'm speaking vaguely here but like in motorsports the cost to operate is so high that i get it like we all need some sponsors we all need sponsors but we're all we're all reaching in the same pot i know which is like I can, well, I see it for everything. Like, of course, every race team needs money. Yes. You know, some more than others. Some yeah. have avenues already set up when they come in. Some people don't need that money technically, but they're still going to go try and get their program paid for. Yeah. And then with media, like, if I'm filming a wedding, like, and or if I need a wedding to be filmed, I can't go, hey, does someone want to come see these people get hitched? Like, it's going to be super cool. Will you do it for free? Yeah. Everyone's going to be like, no, right. I'm not doing it. Pay me. Right. But if I'm like, hey, if I give you a media pass to FD, well, I guess not FD, but a drift event. Like, yeah. there's there's levels and procedures for FD. But yeah. if, if, if I go, hey, I'm going to give you media credentials to a drift event, do you want to come film some cars racing around? Just, like, cut up a little edit and give me right. some footage? Right. There's a million kids that will do that. Right. And, and why is that? Because it's cool. Yeah. But because of that, it's it's harder in drifting to come in, at least media-wise, and you can touch on being a driver, but in media, you can't just come in hot and think everyone's going to throw money at you to make content. Right. Because right. even, like, 2013, like, we were making content, and it was still, like, you had to really provide value or show how you provide value or all the pieces of the puzzle of the media, the program, the driver, yeah. the engagement have to fit yeah. to get money. Yeah, for sure. You know, I agree. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, and that's the kind of chemistry of it. Right. And the guys we look up to, they just been, you know, what I was learning too is like long-term relationships, like carrying a long-term vision. I think a lot of sponsors actually enjoy more than we think. Mm -hmm. So I remember being 2013, 2014, trying to get a 12 month deal. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that those dudes were looking for 36s. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those deals where it's like, did I get that right? 12, 12? Yeah. yeah. Three years. Three years. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's one, it's just, it's, it's a concept of what is your goal? Mm -hmm. And if brand alignment with, sponsorship dollars like if it all it all has to align and then as drifters like you said there's getting to be way more of us now yeah and having either a story or a reason a purpose can set you apart yeah you know it's like one thing to be like yeah what up i'm nate i want to drift mm -hmm. why because all right yeah, cool right. you and everybody else it, yeah it gets a little bit hairy. doing burnouts in cars is fun Obviously. like yep. why should we pay you yep. to do it but on the other hand like literally every driver does have their own story uh -huh. and they do have a thing that they could be a little more like transparent about that yeah. is capturing which i think is what you've done a good job with. i just didn't know it like we go back to that it goes back to Corey. i just didn't know what i was doing so it makes sense like uh -huh. it makes sense that i would speak to my friend and tell how much I just fell on my face and broke my teeth when I didn't realize the world would see it. <laughs> or that it would be so relatable. Or that it would be so Because that's what it is. It, it's, that is the case. It's relatable. And that's what we're literally doing right now. As you guys listen to this, the goal is to just seriously speak the truth, be transparent, show vulnerability. Show vulnerability. We're two Pacificos in, boys, <laughs> boys and girls. Vulnerable. I can't Vul vulnerability. I can't even say, can't it. Even say it That's now. some fucked up shit. Anyways. Be vulnerable. Yes, like showing a little bit of like shit maybe you wouldn't want to show, like not being able to say vulnerability. Well, it's just... I said it. With, with content out today, I don't know, everyone tries to be so kind of... 
Well, now you know it, the world's watching. You're gonna have to cut this out, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking it up. Oh, that's so funny. How do we say this? Like, everyone tries to be so dialed. Yes. Or up until this point, everyone's been so dialed. But that's what I'm saying. Now, currently, you know the world potentially is watching. Mm -hmm. You know, five, ten years ago, it was le it, we all watch cable TV still. Yeah. It was a lot less opportunity that mom, dad, whoever, your best friend's going to actually watch your YouTube channel. Yeah. But your audience is relating to you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's back to you being relatable. Yeah. Like, that's what I think you guys did so well. And, like, you're like, I'm Nate. I grew up skateboarding. That kid's like, I grew up skateboarding too. Right. You're like, I like drifting. I like drifting too, you know? Right. And, and as the content grew and your program grew, I feel like it gives kids hope or it gives kids something that they like watching with yep. a personality that they can relate to. Yeah, I'm with it, I'm with it. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and, it and it's not just skateboarding kids that like 240s. Right. Like when you're at the level that you are, it's anybody trying to drive FD and pursue right. that dream. And, right. You know, you've done it and then you've grown a business and now you're doing it again. And, yeah. and I'm learning. I'm just it's, I'm just like everyone else learning, you know, but let's uh, let's go not to cut you off. Let's yeah. jump back into like, where's Max 2020? Like okay. what's so how did 19 go for you? Like this year went good. 19 was good. It was busy. Um, I again, we talked about like I uh, got in the supplement game you know with one of my business partners the agency that i own with a couple other guys has grown tremendously um and i've really kind of tried to di diversify i've got uh my new company speed patrol which we is... got to talk about speed patrol <laughs> well, i mean we got to talk about speed yeah, patrol for sure. how are we not talked about that i yet? know so tell us about it. Like that's so a the name is rad i like the name thank you i was uh, i'll tell you about the name so speed patrol to me, you know, it's a rip off of beach patrol right. or like lifeguards. And I was uh, on a shoot my seventh day shooting boats for like, you know, we shoot, we get up at 4.30 a.m. to get sunrise shots. We're going to bed at like midnight and then waking up at three to get up. Up to four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like gnarly week. Um, and I'm sitting on a boat and just zoned yeah. out and it just, clicked like the beach patrol speed patrol i was trying to think of a name i had bought my my I system like yeah um, and i guess i'll tell you what it is before i explain what yeah. it means so speed patrol is basically my entity for my pursuit vehicle right. slash camera car right. so i bought a motocrane arm which is a arm that goes on top of a car that you hang a camera from right. that you've probably seen pictures of in movies and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Car chases. Listening, it looks like a Hollywood piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it is like, it's, it's being used on Netflix stocks. Like this, the system from Motocrane really disrupted the market because these older systems were hand built cost minimum quarter million dollars to make. And these guys cost 15, 20 grand a day yeah. to run. Um, I had been eyeing up the system, of course, being in media and automotive. When I saw it came out, it was just kind of like a dream. Like, oh my God, if like I could have that. Brainer, yeah. yeah, I was like, if I could have that or afford that someday, like, I'm gonna do it. Yep. And as 2019 went on and went well, I actually, uh, in, oh, I'm sorry, as 2018 went yeah. on, yeah. 2018 was good too. Because you bought that mid-19 or early 19? I bought it at the end of 18, oh, okay. technically. Okay. Um, I was at SEMA with RTR shooting videos. Right. And I actually had to steal Danny SEMA pass to run inside. I had two hours tops at SEMA to actually go see everything, which I'd, I've been to SEMA with you before. Right, so right. it was fine. Every year things I, change. I yeah. flew into work, I was gonna fly out. So I ran to the Toyota booth because Motocrane had their system on Larry Chin's Corolla in the Toyota awesome. booth. So they had DM'd me while I was there because they saw I was there. They were like, get over here, get your hands on the system, come check it out. So Zach, the CEO, was there. Um, I sat in that car for that whole two hours with him operating it, talking <laughs> about it, you know, yes. just bullshitting with yeah. him. He's super cool dude, real, real visionary and like built this thing, completely changing the market. Right. So fast forward, I bought it and uh, made a big, big financial leap into it. Um, bought 
an Evo 8, a 2003 Mitsubishi Evolution 8 yep. to put it on. Yep. Uh, my buddy Alex at Corsa Technica built the sickest roof rack. Yes, on I've it. seen it's it. Amount it looks slick, man. Dude, he's, he's an insane fabricator. Um, I went to him immediately to have it done. And uh, yeah, I got the crane. And uh, it's funny, I got the crane delivered and I didn't use it for like two months. Like why? I, I got this new toy, didn't use it because I was flying around everywhere shooting oh, right. videos. You still had other obligations yeah. stacked up. Yeah. But then once you got it set up and you got it operating, like like what gigs have you done with it? Oh man. You've done some work with the it. The right? first, first big, actually my first paid gig with it was uh, for Roush. Awesome. We trailered the Evo all the way up to Hamilton, Ohio. Shout out to Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton, Ohio. My, my guy, Tyler Wolf, was uh, directing, producing this piece for Roush. Uh, Jack Roush was there. Aaron Kaufman was the driver. Awesome. Like, pretty big gig to just be thrown into. Yep. Um, I took my buddy Kegel with me and flew in my buddy Jordan from Salt Lake City. Um, he had had a lot of experience with the arm, so I took that budget that I was allotted right. and was like, I need this to go right. Flew Jordan in because I knew he would have my back. on. The and he just had previous work with the actual... Yep. Got it. Yeah, he had so, used the arm before. So it's your first project, but you also let another person come in and help because he yes. had kind of really... Yeah. I'd ran the arm like twice at that got point. It, got it. So, and, you're and production, Roush. yeah, it's and like production so knew this. Yeah, dude, you know, clo we closed down a whole city. That's awesome. We had rain over a whole city for two nights, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, that commercial ended up getting nominated for best commercial at the International Motor Film Awards. Awesome. We didn't win, but we also had like, we operated on a small budget and yeah. everyone was there to kind of like, let's do something cool and get shit done. And awesome. we made waves with it, awesome. you know, the next up budget in the category i think was like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for the commercial when we were operating on a lot smaller wow than that. and then what uh what other gigs followed that um we did that for roush let me think of i just got done a month ago filming with pagani cool. their raduno which is like their car rally they ship in, fly in, all these Paganis. So that's interesting because you didn't bring the Evo to that. No. So the Moto Crane can be riding with you on the airplane to it, the spot you need. Exactly. Cool. It packs down into cases. This, cool. this is the crazy part about it because you can't do this with other arms. Right. This, the system packs down into cases. You can fly places with it. We Turo a Porsche Cayenne, slap it on with suction cups and straps and just we did 1,200 miles in five days wow. with the system on that, wow. following 20 Paganis around. That's super cool. On their, it's like their big rally of the year. That is super People cool. fly in, they stay yeah. at nice hotels, they go to vineyards. They, we uh, actually, the the craziest part about that trip, I, I was actually the driver because I was kind of the most capable driver to try and chase a bunch of Paganis in an SUV, and uh, we chased them up tail of the dragon, which was probably the most insane like an adrenaline inducing thing i've ever done because like <laughs> could you keep up uh d was the, was the i i led them oh you so led it, them. i led them so i led them in and we weren't going to lead them the whole way because we right, right. they're paganis they're going like, to rip past pace. us like, I yeah need to go. it was i was like i have horacio pagani behind me i'm not trying to piss him off by going wow. too slow so, so I mean, like literally. making it boring. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get yelled at in right. Italian. It's like, who the f yeah. yeah. <laughs> who are these nerds in this yeah. camera car? Dude, that's really cool though. But that's a that's a testament to you, because so I mean, obviously, you getting that was probably a big jump. Like you're like, all right, oh, fuck yeah. it, I'm getting this moto crane, I'm going for it. Like, well, I'll tell you the big like my big thought behind this, right? Yep. Like, you know, you're a drifter. You have a bunch of friends that are drifters. Mm -hmm but you guys are all trying to get sponsors, you know? That's like, right. I'm a filmer, I'm a cameraman, but at the end of the day, like I have all these friends that are filmers, but at the same time, we're competing for the same money and the same clients. Right. Now there's plenty to go around. We all have our different clients and stuff, but the big move on the Moto Crane for me, the thought process was, how can I utilize this network that I've developed of people that do the same thing I do, but provide a different kind of service or value right. that will get me paid? Because everyone's got a red. Yes. Now, now they're every. You go to FD. Everyone has reds. They've got these crazy nice cameras. Like it doesn't matter anymore. DSLRs are so good now. Side like, thought: Can we throw the Moto Crane on a drift car? Yeah. 
I've been I've been waiting to do donuts with it. I just don't know what car to put it That'd on. That'd be so sick. And it's not gonna look cool on my car, obviously. Nope, nope. Yeah. 2020, we'll work on something. Yeah. That's super cool. We might, uh, I, I, I have been asked if I can put it on, actually I've been asked twice if I can put it on the Lamborghini Urus. Gnarly. So one for a, a personal project and the other for an actual Lamborghini Also project. the other thought I had was we filmed the project uh, at Harris Hill Raceway yeah. with Harrison really and Fielding Shredder and myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, What episode of that is your? Uh, that's uh, 19 for us, Corey? Is that uh, 18? 17? 18. 18. Look, yeah. look up the yeah, hair exactly. cell. Yeah, so Endless Search for Tires, episode 18, plug. Uh, that's a directly this event. Like, it wasn't an event, but we went drifting to film an Inke commercial. Yep. And then also you set out with Speed Patrol to film drifting, kind of for the first time in like full action. Yeah, for sure. Like, Max's Evo. It was a test day for yeah, us too. Yeah, but I had obligations to fill, you had obligations to fill. Yep. So like and there was looked, shit on the line. It looked beautiful, man. It looked good. We got a good response from it. Corey's so. edit was sick from it. Corey's edit was sick. Yep. The footage was nuts. Yep. That was uh, it, our our video debuted at SEMA at the Inke booth. Yeah. That, that went really well. That content, at least over social media, made the most waves of anything. Wow. You know, like the Pagani stuff's not out. Yeah. Like I've got things rolling out, but like a BTS clip and a drifting clip of Fielding and Harrison blew up online. Yeah, yeah. That solo clip of you coming yeah. down, like rolling the Dude, outside that was so zone, sick. like that was. It, it's it's reposted everywhere. That's super cool. You know, super cool. So it was cool for the first day to go out yeah. and just see, you know, how hard we could push the arm because yes. I know for a fact nobody's pushed it that hard. No, that was gnarly, man. I mean, we're talking like. I'm chasing you drifting full speed. Yeah. You're you're leading us. Like yeah. it's that was actually speaking of drifting the camera car, we were drifting following you guys. <laughs> you're sliding? Yeah. Kegel was driving and we actually we were going up the hill around that bend and I think we were trying to film some three car stuff. Gnarly. And yeah, back end stepped out and I was, I was praying. So a bunch of those clips from Harris Hill went, you know, viral ish, whatever you want to call it. Like Clips of you, clips of Nate, or I'm sorry, clips of you, clips of Fielding and Harrison driving. Yes. Um, yeah, and that went good. Most recent project I had was two days ago. We shot a music video for a Def Jam artist here in Dallas, Miss uh, Cash Page. She's just young, young chick from Dallas, 18 years old, kind of like an R&B, cool. hip hop vibe, like. It's cool because her music's sick yeah. and like I actually like it, which yeah. I'm sure any videographer knows, like a lot of the times you shoot music videos for content you don't like, but she's coming up, signed to Def Jam. Um, we rolled the crane car around Dallas in the middle of the night. Sick. It was super cool. Um, and how do people, how do people find you for that stuff? It's what I said, like I bought that piece of equipment to utilize videographers that I know, you know, and pro try and provide value from them. Network. And my boy Christian, shout out Christian. Um, he's been on the big come up shooting music videos. And uh, he hit me up, it was like, hey, Def Jams wants a video of Cash. I think he's shot a couple projects with her and it's kind of like in her crew um, of people, you know, the directors, producers, um, and he, he's the DP and uh, hit me up was like hey you know the song's called six four we got three impalas yeah. showing out yep. we're gonna go cruise them around dallas can you bring the camera car out Sick. and you know they they squeeze us in the budget and it was super fun that's awesome super fun. that's super cool and for stuff like that you just go strictly film use the equipment drop the footage to them and you're mm -hmm. clear yeah, but uh, like other projects, you would do the full body, like yeah, you know, there's 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 a lot of projects that I'll I'll do all the editing on. Yeah. Um, as of late, I haven't been doing that with automotive stuff. A lot yeah. of it's just hired. You know, we call it hired gun. Yeah. Like you show up, you shoot, and you drop the footage, yeah. and that's it, which is great. Yeah. Um, but moving forward, like I'm excited to do a lot more projects, kind of step into a director's role for yeah. some you know, big budget style concepts yeah. to go pitch to manufacturers. That's super cool. Um, but yeah, it's just 
providing value with him yeah. and that's awesome and moving forward doing projects with you obviously yes and, yes and uh, yeah we're trying to get max more included in the 144 camp again 2020 yeah uh which is real fitting for us you know mm -hmm. yeah that's you know going back to talking about full circle me being here yep. um i don't know if you want to delegate or tell them like my involvement but from from what we've talked about, like I'm excited to work with you and uh, do kind of a media sponsor relations, mm -hmm. you know, help organize projects, direct projects. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so with so from the background on my end with 144 Racing, we've been plugging away at content this season, like mm -hmm. through Corey, my, me my mechanic Dave, and myself, we just have been throwing out transparent content like all year. And it really is picking up, which is great. But, you know, I think one of my strengths is to know what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so I know as things pick up for us, uh, I don't know as much about the actual budgets and, and film like structure, lingo. the lingo, the structure, right? Like I'm an athlete, I'm a driver, I'm, I'm kind of running and operating 144 as a whole. but. That's where Max uh, stepped in, and it was just great alignment of time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think it's a great role for you. Like yeah. seriously, like you helping us connect dots with sponsors and budgets and reaching out and gaining projects mm -hmm. is something that I think 144 is ready for. Mm -hmm. And also our team with all powers combined can mm -hmm. definitely influence in a cool new way to the like motorsports community. Yeah. It's, I think it's going to be fun um, finally getting back to drifting, yeah. you know, and uh, it's, we all love drifting yeah. for some reason. For some. Doing, doing burnouts in cars <laughs> really, really fast is yes. super fun, course, you know, and even as a content creator, like shooting that yeah. or, you know, for me driving too, yeah. um, when I, you know, when you get rid of any money or just any any uh, material things, like everyone here, I think at their core, like yeah. they want to be about around racing, whether yeah. it's driving, shooting content, working on the cars, like yeah. we're all fitting into roles that help uh, service that need yes. in us yeah. to, to be around drifting. For sure. And it took us all time to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, every one of us could be wherever we want it to be. You know, the fact that we choose to be together and doing this is special. Yeah, it's well, it's just crazy because it's it's full circle. You know, you and I both at, at different times. Well, I, I guess I would say me first. I took time off from the program, yeah. you know, like right. we did FD for three years yeah. straight. And yeah. I think it was three years and then I took a year off to kind of work on building uh, the agency, local yep. media house that I'm partnered in, in yep. Dallas, um, just directing media and handling their content, you know, growing that business because I saw a need for me to have kind of a, a base. Right. And as a media guy in drifting, like, it's hard. Yeah. It's like what we talked about. Yeah. We're all fighting over the same money. Of course. There's plenty of it. The sport's growing, whatever. But I wanted a little more stable ground Yep. to stand on just like maybe you shouldn't buy a $50,000 drift car if you don't make more than $50,000 a year, you know, <laughs> right. like sometimes you got to put shit aside and go, you know, what? I'm going to grind for a it's year or two. It's long term thinking. Yeah. Long term. It's thinking. long term, long term yep. goals. Yep. You know, that's what the C36 is to me. Yep. You know, I sold my S13 was like, I need to grind now and I'll be able to afford exactly. to drift again one day. Exactly. You know, and I know you even took a yeah. year off. Yep. I took a year off. You yeah. Know? Yeah, which was uh, like very, very, looking back on it now is super important. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, I literally remember me watching the patterns that I would do and then realizing the only thing that would get me out of those patterns was to take away all opportunity to fall back in them, which is super weird to say, but it's like, that's what I did. I mean, I, I, it's I, hard. I at one point looked around the room and I was like, there's a mechanic, not mine. I'm at a shop, not mine. Like everything I was around, I had no real, it wasn't mine. It wasn't going to go with me anywhere. It wasn't going to grow with me anywhere. It just, it was, I was a piece of the puzzle, uh, which was great for me at that time. Mm -hmm. But kind of like you said, you know, that 
uh, whatever entrepreneur spirit or something where you're just like, but where am I at in three years? Mm -hmm. Where am I at in two years? Or what if they don't like me tomorrow and they just kick me out? Mm -hmm. That was really kind of my driving force to say, I know it'll take me a long time to go start a screen printing company, right? Like the whole thing I did, mm -hmm. but it's so true like that gave me so much energy in drifting 28 19 sorry mm -hmm. this season 2019 i can't even explain it yeah i mean this season was my best season ever yeah like seriously it was the funnest and that's a lot to it, say yeah with what you've done i, I mean but it but it is like mm -hmm. it's and i love competing and, and everyone asks will you come back to fd yes uh, we're gonna be back you know mm -hmm. someday but it's like i have 25 more years to drive Mm -hmm. So I just always think to myself, like, who's going to, like, just keep watching, you know, mm -hmm. like, things take time and taking a break, um, I won't say his name, but he knows who he is. I got a text from a real uh, kind of influenced person in my life, and he said, S career suicide. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I knew, like, it's not true, but it yeah. looks that way. So well, it's a heavy decision to make. Of course. And 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 when you leave what you you had known for, you know, pr pro drifting for five years, yeah. and then just drifting in general for yeah. way way longer. Yeah. Than that. And I went cold turkey, dude. I yeah. went like no drifting you didn't, in eighteen at all. Yeah. You I mean, didn't buy a little cheap drift car. No. You didn't go out to events. Nope. I remember. I remember inviting you out to events. You're I never like, no, I never you were like, it's not time. FD came to the hometown, didn't go home, yeah. sat on the couch. Like I just it's one of those deals you love so much I couldn't I couldn't even be around it because I wanted to do it so much, but I was kind of holding myself back to change my patterns. Mm -hmm. I mean I was literally going to not learn about business. I, I didn't know about business, mm -hmm. like, but I needed to know that. Like mm -hmm. in drifting, that was one of the things that I think about a lot is like, I really want someone more knowledgeable than myself mm -hmm. eventually to run a business class mm -hmm. on drifting. Like yeah. drifting is like 10% on track, 90% off track. Mm -hmm. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. But it's it, to the public, it's the other way. Obviously, you need to be a good driver and you need to win competitions. And of course, that's the driving force of the drifter. But yeah. you also have like the whole other side of like, how do you afford this shit? How are yeah. you doing this? Well, how, what do you what are your sponsors gaining? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, this sounds basic, but I think people forget, like, especially pro am level drivers, they go ask people for money. Mm -hmm. They're giving you money because they want to make more money than they give of you. Of course. And, and that can be cut and dry as, yeah. you know, if I give you $1,000, I need to sell $3,000 of this port. Or what you do is show brand value and engagement. Right. And that's, and, uh, that's what you've done. That's what Vaughn does. Right. Like, well, a slice of that for the viewer out there that's listening that may, whatever, doesn't exactly know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for us at SEMA this season, like just one slice of the pie is just basically, do you have a media division at your company? Yes, we do. Okay. Does that guy have to create content? Yes, he does. Okay. We're going to chop off every Monday for him. What do you mean? Every drift event we go to, I'm going to deliver you five photos. There's four months in every month, or four weeks in every month, right? Mm -hmm. On average, three, something, whatever. But it's like every Monday, you're going to have a piece of content for us. So we're going to chop one day out of his workflow. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Awesome. Would you like to sign the deal? So you see what I'm saying, guys? Yeah, that's like, the not cut and dry, smart stuff that people. Well, that's do. just what you have to realize is like companies are marketing, and if you're helping them market, you literally have to tell them Mondays are 144. Like I want my post every Monday and if I deliver you 10 photos and you have two a day on Mondays mm -hmm. and then they like that. They're like, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. So my guy doesn't have to go create content for you. No, my team is going to create content for you. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're going to give us this dollar amount that is going to put food in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Boom. And that worked so well for us. And I want everyone to use that. So everybody out there do the same shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling everyone just what I'm learning because that's all I know. That's all there is to do is like help the industry grow. Yeah. And then another like coin that I want to use is just what sponsors can we bring to drifting? Mm -hmm. Like everyone's pulling from that same pool, pool like mm -hmm. you said. So it's like try to bring some shit into drifting. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. But anyways, good stuff. It is good stuff.
Yeah, I so think. So where are you 2020? Like, what's the goal next season? Uh, next year, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start outside of 144. You know, I've got Tenfold, the supplement company. Cool. We've got a patent on a magnetic scooper. That's super that, cool. I've talked know, to a few people about that, and that's like. Everyone's like, everyone why didn't I think that? of that? Why didn't no one think of that? You know? You know the pre-workout? Yeah, you know the scooper's like buried in the fucking yeah. shit, and you're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. They have a little magnetic lid that holds the, they're like, what? You open it, it's stuck to the lid. You don't have to get your hands dirty. That's, you know, for us, it's pre-workout, but it can be proteins, it can be coffee, it can be. Right. Y your sister was That's like, it needs that. to be in baby yeah. formula. Hey, there you know? You go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just growing that and, and, and full shout out to Jordan, you know, that's something that he developed, yes. you know, and brought me in on, awesome. um, great guy, great business partner. Um, so we want to grow that and grow, um, our influencer network and just spread yeah. it out to people and cool. get people using it. Cool. Um, speed patrol, obviously filming more cool shit yep. with the camera car. Cause it's. Just way too fun. Yeah. Way too fun. That's like a timeless piece too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, my agency just continuing to let it grow on the tra trajectory that it's been on. Got it. Um, and then 144, man, I plan on uh, enjoying stepping back into the drifting world, yeah. helping you be able to step away from some stuff and just be an athlete <laughs> and a driver. Okay. You know, yeah. like. And, uh, and and help bear some of the load that, that you and Corey and Dave have, have yeah. just taken on with this past season, bring my expertise in, talk to sponsors, yeah. um, you know, organize media projects, yeah, bring in sure. deals, help sponsors uh, develop projects that, right. that will bring value exactly. to them. You know, that's the biggest thing is trying to take the tools I have, get our team together, people, yep. and provide value to your sponsors yep. so you can keep going racing and we can all go racing too. That's super cool. That is super cool. This has been an awesome conversation. Um, this is normal, I feel This like. is actually normal, yeah. This is what we do a lot, but we're glad that we can include the public. Mm -hmm. Super yeah. cool. This is this is just another one of our uh, visionary talks. <laughs> our jam session. In our, in our old apartment, this is just what we did That's all right, the time. years later, still doing it. Yeah. Well, thanks for chatting with us, man. I appreciate it for sure. Cool. Yep. Anything else? Like you good? Anything else you want to say? Man, I think I'm good. Feel I'm good? excited to uh, yeah. engage with you guys in 2020. Yes, exactly. You guys, Max, fully on our team. Keep a lookout for him. Uh, we will be in the drifting community grassroots, another tour this season, mm -hmm. uh, which will be super interesting. So yeah, we'll see you guys around at a track.